Hello, my name is Jean Nelson and I am your service associate for today. Welcome to our virtual service of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Tarpon Springs. I want to take a moment to extend a very warm welcome to everyone who is joining us today. Rather than gathering because we all have the same beliefs, we are an intentional community gathered around our shared promise to support each other's individual journeys. We're also intentional about bringing all ages together. In today's virtual time, that often doesn't happen. But we think it's important to have an adult friend ask a child or a youth how they are doing or if they seem worried about something. Or a young person and a 70-year-old chat about life right now while they are at home all the time and maybe missing their daily life. That's a little bit about us. We hope that after this service or at 11 o'clock on Sunday, you can log into our Zoom chat room and tell us a little bit about you during our virtual social hour. We will now light the chalice. have Barbara Rosen and she'll give us our story for all ages. Hello everyone and especially you young at heart. I've got a story today and it's called supporting the people who need us. So I want to tell you a story about being new. How sometimes it's fun and sometimes it isn't. Once there was a second grader named Paul. In September, he moved to a new town, had a new teacher, a new class, and a brand new desk. There was a boy sitting across from him with bright red hair, and his name was Ryan. He told Paul a knock-knock joke, and it was very funny. So that first day was a good day. The second day, three other boys to Ryan, and he thought, Oh, great, they want to make friends with me too. But that wasn't what happened. They came up and started poking Paul and even calling him names. He looked at his friend Ryan. Ryan didn't really want to hear what was going on. So what do you think he did? What would you do if you didn't want to hear something that was going on? This is what he did. He put his hands over his ears. The second day wasn't such a good day, but the next day was even worse because the three boys came up to Paul at lunchtime and they stole his lunch. He didn't anything to eat. The day after that, Paul didn't come to school at all. The three boys were cheering that day because Paul wasn't there. Then, even though he didn't want to, Paul heard them planning mean things they were going to do when Paul came back to school. But this time, he didn't put his hands over his ears. What do you think he did? He told the teacher. And when Paul came back to school, there was recess and the three boys came around. But then 
the teacher came also. Ryan said, come on, play with me. And that day was the best day of all because that boy Paul and Ryan, that day Paul and Ryan became best friends. My hope for you is that when you hear something you'd rather not hear, that you don't put your hands over your ears. I hope that when you see or hear someone that needs your help, you find a way to support someone who needs you. The end. And please go now in peace. Although we need and crave food to suppress our physical hunger, it can mean much more than that. It can involve all the intricacies of life itself. This poem by Joy Harjo, entitled, Perhaps the World Ends Here, is food for thought. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared set on the table. It has been since creation and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it, babies teeth at the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it, we make women. At this table we gossip, we call enemies and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves and as we put ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain, an umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror, a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth at, on this table and have prepared our parents for burial here. At this table, we sing with joy, with sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table while we are laughing and crying, eating of the last sweet bite. And now we pause for a moment of silence followed by Spirit of Life.
The special music for today is a song by Woody Guthrie called I Ain't Got No Home. Just a walking, working man, I go from town to town. Police make it hard wherever I am, and I ain't got no home in this world anymore. I was farming on the shares, and I always was poor. Harvesting tomatoes and fruit till I was sore. My wife took down and died upon my cabin floor. And I ain't got no home in this world anymore. I mind in your mind. And I gathered in your coin. I've been working, mister, since the day that I was born. I'm hungry all the time, like I never was before. And I ain't got no home in this world anymore. Now as I look around, it's mighty plain to see This wild and wicked world is a funny place to be The gambling man is rich and the working man is poor And I ain't got no home in this world anymore Kathy Lawson explain Give the Plate Sunday and continue with our offering opportunity. Once a month, our church takes a special collection for a worthy social justice cause. We call it Give the Plate Sunday. For the month of April, our Give the Plate offering will go to help Florida farm workers through the Coalition of Immokalee Workers, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Let me give you some background. What happens if America's 2.5 million farm workers get sick? Simply put, without farm workers, there is no food. Picture yourself waking up in a decrepit single wide trailer packed with a dozen strangers. Four to a room. All using the same cramped bathroom and kitchen before heading to work. You ride to and from the fields in the back of a hot, repurposed school bus, shoulder to shoulder with 40 or more strangers. And when your workday is done, you wait for your turn to shower and cook before you can lay your head down to sleep. That is the life for far too many farm workers in Florida today. Florida farm workers are routinely denied water and shade despite blazing heat, subjected to humiliation and even violence by their field bosses while women are assaulted in the fields. We can no longer stand by while our elected officials tell farm your labor is essential 
but you are expendable. Farm worker leaders are working around the clock, leading an emergency campaign for urgently needed medical resources. Due to COVID-19, farm workers in Florida and across the U.S. are facing an unprecedented threat to their health and safety, a massive shortage of personal protective gear and have no real tools or power to advocate for themselves families. What can we do to protect farm workers in Florida? Urgent action is needed. COVID-19 testing needs to be done among farm workers now. Appropriate personal protection and sanitation gear must be provided. Temporary medical facilities need to be set up now. To donate to Give the Plate, you may go to our website, uutarpin.org, and click Donate. Please select Social Justice Projects so we know this is your Give the Plate offering. If you prefer to donate by mail, send your check to 57 Reed Street. The full address is displayed on the screen indicate give the plate in the memo line. Thank you. like to introduce our speaker with the message of the day, David Cutler, who will give us the history of the homeless in Pinellas and what some agencies are doing to meet their needs here in Tarpon Springs. Thank you, Bonnie. For the past two and a half years, volunteers from your church have participated in a meal service for the homeless in partnership with Mount Moriah Church and the Shepherd Center. The Shepherd Center is the food pantry for our area. How this works is Mount Moriah uh, actually provides the venue, uh, which includes a kitchen and a social hall. Uh, the Shepherd Center provides the food and any other supplies we may need. And your church and its volunteers become the, uh, uh, the labor in all this, which includes uh, obtaining the food, figuring out what kind of uh, uh, what kind of menu you're gonna provide, and then cooking the food and serving the food. We do this uh, on two or three Tuesdays every month, and the way it works in Tarpon Springs, on each day of the week, a uh, different nonprofit is responsible for feeding the homeless. So we do it on Tuesdays, uh, and uh, it's, it's usually a, a church that's involved in doing that. Now, prior to the, the virus, here's kind of how everything worked. Uh, food was not an issue. Uh, every day, uh, food, food would arrive at the Shepherd Sublix or Winn-Dixie or, or, or any grocery store uh, that was meat coming to its uh, date, uh, some uh, produce that maybe get slightly brown around the edges or pastry from yesterday that they didn't sell. Uh, and that's the kind of stuff that we would get in order to serve folks. We would, we would get there around eight o'clock in the morning uh, at Mount Moriah Church. We'd start cooking. We'd have coffee and pastry out by 8.30 and we'd have a full meal service starting at around 10.30. You think 10.30 is a little early, but these folks are pretty hungry. In most cases, they haven't eaten since the food service they 
they attended the, the day before and they're lined up and they want to be fed at 1030. So uh, it's a full meal, meat, rice and potatoes, soup, salad, bread and dessert. Um, we serve, we, we did serve between 75 and 90 people on the Tuesdays we worked. Uh, and at that time I would ask you guys to please bring your containers to the church and leave them open because we always serve more food than we needed. And we took the containers and we could take the extra food. We could put it in the containers and hand it out as people left so that later in the day they would have something else to eat. Again, in most cases, this was the only meal of the day. Now, we also got to know our constituents pretty closely. Uh, this was the social happening for the most part for these folks. This is how they interacted. Uh, it was, this meal was probably the high point of their day. Uh, here's, here's an example of some of the people we served. Uh, one of the fellows did not, did, does not like taking a free meal, so he insists on helping us clean it up among the dishes, take out the trash afterwards, because that's the kind of pride he has. We have other folks that, uh, we have a, uh, a minister who uh, is homeless, uh, and he uh, insists on getting up and saying grace before every meal. We have uh, folks that we know of that have certain medical conditions, so we make sure that uh, we uh, maybe have a salt-free uh, type of meal for some of those folks or, th or things along that line. We have folks with dental problems that can't chew meat. So, so we know we give them an extra helping of soup and, and a lot less meat. Uh, most of the folks are 80 to 90% male. Uh, probably, clearly there are some folks uh, in, that receive this service that are there because of substance abuse or alcohol abuse. But I would say the vast folks there are just people that have social issues or personality issues that makes it very difficult for them to integrate into normal society, so to speak. Uh, they're fine people. We've, we've never had a problem with violence or even voice raising or anything like that. So uh, they're people that have just been dealt a bad hand in life. So keep that in mind. Uh, since the virus, we've, we've, we've run into several challenges. First of all, the food being sent into the Shepherd Center from the grocery store way down. I don't know if you remember about three weeks ago, you'd walk into Publix and there was no meat in the meat counter. There was no eggs. There was no milk. Uh, that's gotten a little bit better, uh, but still uh, the, the food coming in the Shepherd Center is really way down. So we're having a hard time getting the hamburg, the chicken, or maybe the ham that we used to make a nice meal before. Uh, the, the larger problem though is social distancing. We, we cannot have 75 or 90 people in a small in, inside social setting. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to uh, have the food ready when they get there, hand them the food outside and then tell them to vacate. And which is kind of a, it sounds kind of cold and heartless, but that's really the only way we can maintain any type of social distancing. So we still get there at eight in the morning, we get the food prepared. Uh, the, it's, it's, it's not the full gamut hot meal that we did before, but it is a sandwich and we try to have one hearty dish. Last week we had uh, a, a real heavy macaroni salad with uh, ham and vegetables in it. Uh, and that went along with the sandwich and, uh, and the other stuff we put in there. So uh, that worked out pretty well. Uh, our, our challenge right now is we need uh, at least two or three containers for every meal we serve. Uh, it's, uh, we do make a sandwich for everybody, sometimes two sandwiches, and we can put those in a baggie, but it's awful hard to get uh, chili or macaroni salad into a baggie and you, sure, and you certainly wouldn't want to give it to, to somebody and ask them to eat from that. So uh, we, we, we really need some, uh, some containers that'll seal. I'll show you an example here. This is uh, about the size we're talking about. Uh, it, it, just enough to hold a nice big uh, 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 portion of uh, macaroni salad or chili. 
Uh, here's another one here we can do. Uh, we could use this on a sandwich if we were to have a hot sandwich maybe. Uh, maybe like a sloppy joe or something like that. We could use something like this. So uh, any, any containers you guys may be able to provide would be greatly appreciated. Now, I don't necessarily need things like that. Think about uh, cottage cheese containers or uh, uh, larger yogurt containers or things along that line that, has, that have a top that would, that would seal on there and that you would normally put into recycling. If you could possibly put those aside and maybe once a week or so stop around at 57 Reed Street and put them on the porch, I'll make sure I'll, I get around there every couple of days to take them and would, they would be much appreciated. So I want to uh, recommend here from the church who do participate in this. So thanks to Dimitri Hernandez, Linda Mandano, uh, Rose D'Alessandro, Carolyn Baum, Ellen O'Hanlon, John Ferguson, Julie Wade, and of course my wife, Debbie Cutler. I got to mention her. So uh, They've been doing this for two to two and a half years and it's very much appreciated. Now the message today is really uh, with everything that's going on with the virus and the social distance, so get frustrated, maybe sometimes we even feel sorry for ourselves and we keep saying, geez, I can't wait for this to get over. I can't, uh, and, and, and the only way we have a social interaction is through venues like this, which is, uh, you know, not the best thing in the world, but, Think of how good we really do have it uh, compared to the folks Kathy has, has just talked about and the homeless around Tarpon Springs. Uh, and I think we need to be grateful for what we have and please provide good thoughts and prayers for the folks who don't have as, as good as we do. So that's my message for today. Thank you much. I do appreciate it. Please stay safe and thank you. And for our final hymn, we'll let us sing together, Building a New Way. Extinguish our challenge.
central task of a religious community is to unveil the bond that bind each to all. There is a connection, a relationship discovered amid the particulars of our own lives and the lives of others. Once felt, it inspires us to act for justice. May you remember these words in that. Please check the church website and the e-news for updates of happenings this week. Have a nice day, and I hope to see you soon, even if it is in virtual time. Go in peace.